Hi everybody, this is Dr. Anubraha here. Today let's talk about NST, non-stress test. Okay, it is a antenatal surveillance test. That is a test that we do after 32 weeks of gestation to know the well-being of the fetus. Now, before telling you how to read an NST, just like ECG, it is a graph, okay, that tells you it has got different parameters and it tells you the well-being of the fetus. Now, before going on to that, let's talk about the difference between NST and CTG. What is CTG? It is cardiotopography. Now, NST is done after 32 weeks of pregnancy, okay. In NST, we get to know the fetal heart rate and other variables related to the fetus, Okay. So basically in an NST there is only one graph, Okay, one line will be there, the graph. In CTG, cardiotopography, that we do when the woman starts getting uh, pain or you know during the time of labor, not during delivery, like when she starts to get the pain, when she's nearing her labor, we do CTG, cardiotopography. There we have got two graphs, okay. Above is the NST graph, that is a fetal parameter graph. And below is a line that tells you about the uterine contraction. So I'll tell you in detail when you see the graphs. Just now remember the difference between NST and CTG. It is a viva question. NST is done after 32 weeks and it has got only one graph that tells you about the fetus. Okay. CTG is done during labor when she starts getting the pain. And that tells you about the fetus and the uterine contractions. Now, why do we do this NST after 32 weeks? Why not before 32 weeks of pregnancy? It's because after 32 weeks, the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system of the fetus is mature and we can clearly depict uh, the details about the fetus in the graph. All right. Now, in NST, we've got four variables. Okay. In detail, I'll uh, talk to you when we talk, uh, when we go to the graph. As of now, just remember that in NST, you have acceleration deceleration beat to beat variability and baseline heart rate all right before going on to the graph let's uh, talk about how we do the procedure okay in nst what we do is we make the women lie down usually in the left lateral position at nst we need only one transducer because here only the fetal parameters are measured we have only cardio transducer that is applied on the abdomen that is kept on the abdomen of the women so before keeping that band we apply a gel on the abdomen and then we keep the band okay the transducer not the band but that is because we do not want any other medium in between the skin and the transducer okay we want it airtight so that it it gets a fetus sound only and not the sounds from the atmosphere that is why we make it we apply the gel all right so that is your nst and uh, then we get the graph from the electronic uh, fetal monitoring machine in ctg we have got two transducers because we have i told you we have two lines in the graph again one is your cardio transducer that is placed uh, usually in the anterior shoulder level of the fetus okay uh, and the other transducer is your toco transducer, which is placed at the fundus, the fundus of the uterus. I mean, that is also over the abdomen only. That transducer tells us about the uterine contraction and that is depicted on the graph. So in CTG, you have got two lines in the graph. In NST, we have only one line in the graph. All right. All right let's see how to read our NST. It is basically a, a very simple topic. But before going on to that, you should understand the concept. See, look here. This is a pregnant lady and on her we tie a band. Okay, this band is your transducer. Cardio transducer. This band here. Okay. And this machine is an electronic fetal monitoring machine. Okay. You see the graph here. Okay. This is your NST. Actually, this is a CTG because you have two graphs. I'll tell you the difference between NST and CTG. So, in NST, you have only one graph. Okay, so this is an NST, all right. You get to see only one graph that tells you about the fetal heart rate and other parameters. Okay, in CTG, now what is a CTG? Cardiotocography. We have got two graphs, okay. The above one is same as NST. It tells you about the fetal heart rate and all of the parameters, the above graph that you see here. The below graph tells you about the uterine contraction. So this is your CTG. 
all right now see in viva they might ask you what is the difference between nst and ctg you must say in the nst we get to know only about the fetus okay the fetal heart rate now the parameters are seen so there is basically only one graph in ctg we get to know about the fetus okay and the uterine contraction the frequency and all so basically there are two graphs in ctg ctg is done during labor matlab not when she is delivering see when she starts pain when she starts her pain we do a ctg okay after 30 weeks of 32 weeks of pregnancy we do a nst so this is a picture of nst all right see look here look at the second picture this is your ctg cardio topography here you can see two bands tied right unlike the nst where only one band was tied in ctg you have two bands and one band here is for the fetus okay just like nst the other band here is placed at the fundus okay and that is to record the uterine contraction so in both these places what we do is we apply the gel we do not want uh, any other medium between the transducers and the skin okay we want it air tight so we apply the gel and we place these bands these transducers this is your nst okay this is the nst you can see only one graph here okay this is a graph of nst now before interpreting i want you to know what axis what each axis represents so the horizontal axis this axis it tells you about the time okay in seconds and the vertical axis okay this axis tells you about the beats okay the heart rate so you can see here you can see here 90 120 150 so above the vertically it tells you about the heart rate now see i'm taking one small box okay one small box from the graph to explain it better each small box horizontally represents 10 seconds okay and vertically vertically each small box represents 10 beats all right now in nst you have got four parameters okay the first parameter is your baseline heart rate of the fetus okay now how to find the baseline heart rate from this graph look here can you see this this part okay that tells you there is a constant something like a line okay that line tells you what is the baseline heart rate of the fetus okay so here can you see this is 120 okay this is 130 140 so this line if you draw a line over here you can see that the baseline heart rate corresponds to 140 here okay so what is a normal heart rate of a fetus it is 110 to 160 beats per minute okay so here it is 140 which is normal all right now if it is less than 110 it is a case of bradycardia if it is more than 160 it is a case of tachycardia so this is how you interpret the baseline heart rate all right we will talk about acceleration okay now what is acceleration let me show that in the graph first can you see these upstrokes see can you see this upstroke here okay so these are your accelerations okay accelerations are very good it tells the fetal well being in an nst so the more acceleration is good it uh, the more the acceleration the better Uh, well-being of the fetus now there is some criteria that acceleration needs to follow okay so i told you each small box here okay each small box here if i make it big vertically it is 10 beats and horizontally it is 10 seconds so each acceleration should be more than 15 beats per minute lasting for 15 seconds in a 20 minute nst okay so when i say more than 15 beats it should cross one and a half box vertically 
and one and a half box horizontally that is when we say the acceleration is good okay so once again the criteria for acceleration is at least two accelerations should be there in a 20 minute duration okay of nst and these accelerations should increase by 15 beats per minute and each acceleration should last for about 15 seconds that is about your acceleration and it is a very good sign it tells the well-being of the fetus next is your deceleration so deceleration is nothing but a downstroke see let's see in the graph look here okay it is not given in the graph supposedly suppose there was an, a downstroke like this this is called as deceleration okay so this is a baseline heart rate okay and a downstroke these two are decelerations and decelerations are very bad for the baby it indicates something called as fetal hypoxia all right this deceleration is of two types okay and to know see this deceleration is basically seen well in a ctg than in an nst okay so first deceleration is called as the early deceleration first type is called as the early deceleration that is let us say this is a second graph here okay an upstroke on the second graph means there is uterine contraction okay whenever there is a uterine contraction there is an upstroke in the second graph in ctg okay so early deceleration means see above you have the nst right okay with the uterine contraction there is a deceleration okay so this graph is for the fetus basically the first graph is nothing but the nst and the second graph is your uterine contraction so whenever there is a uterine contraction with the uterine contraction there is a deceleration so that is called as early deceleration deceleration and actually that is physiological physiological meaning see when uh, the head passes through the head of the baby passes through the pelvic brim hmm? the parietal bones of the baby will come closer and there will be molding of the head okay that is why this deceleration occurs and that is physiological so what does it mean see whenever you get a early deceleration in your ctg it means that uh, the head has gone down the pelvic brim and the molding is happening so get ready for delivery so that is your early deceleration okay there is something called as late deceleration as the name suggests whenever there is a uterine contraction okay what happens here is after the contraction there is a deceleration all right this late deceleration is a very bad sign and this again indicates there is fetal hypoxia. The last criteria in NST is your beat to beat variability. So that is associated with fetal heart rate. See the fetal heart rate. You can see the fetal heart rate here. See this is a fetal heart rate. I'm taking, I'm magnifying it. See, I have magnified the fetal heart rate, okay? And if each heart rate is more than half of one small box, then we say it is a good beat to beat variability. So I told you vertically each box represents 10 beats, okay? So half of it will be 5. So I'm telling you if fetal heart rate, each heart rate, if it is more than half of one box, that is more than 5 beats, then it is good we say it is a good variability nst so normal beat to beat variability is 5 to 25 beats all right now why do we do uh, nst see uh, nowadays we do nst in all pregnancies okay but uh, usually nst is uh, meant to be done on pregnancies high risk pregnancies like gestational hypertension gestational diabetes previous history of uh, stillbirths, suspected IUGR or uh, fetal hypoxia. These are some of the indications of doing a NST. Now, when do we say a NST is reactive or it is normal? So I told you there are four parameters, right? Okay, the fetal heart rate should be 110 to 160. The fetal heart rate range should be between 110 to 160. Okay, that, uh, that is the first criteria. 
second one about the acceleration so in a 20 minute duration there should be at least two acceleration lasting for about 15 seconds and increasing more than 15 beats per minute once again there should be at least two accelerations in 20 minutes lasting for about 15 seconds and 15 beats per minute there should be no deceleration decelerations are very bad in a nst it tells you that the fetus has hypoxia right and then there is beat to beat variability normal beat to beat variability is 5 to 25 beats now what is this beat to beat variability see it tells you about uh, it is connected to the fetal heart rate and tells you about the sympathetic and parasympathetic development of the fetus. Now when do we say that the graph is non-reactive? When there are no accelerations, I mean when there is no, not even two acceleration, in a 40 minute duration we say it is a non-reactive NST. Okay? Now why, uh, why NST could be non-reactive? What are the causes of a non-reactive NST? See, either the child could be, the baby could be sleeping in the womb, okay, and that is normal. Sometimes in that case, the, there would not be any acceleration. Or it could be medications the mother is taking like uh, methadopa, insulin. Or it could be a case of fetal hypoxia, immature CNS. So these are the causes of non-reactive NST. Alright, now some of the viva questions that I got for my exam from this topic. The first question was, what is the difference between NST and CTG? So I told you NST is done after 32 weeks and CTG is done during the labor when she starts to get the pain and CTG has got two graphs. One is the NST and the below one is a uterine contraction and uh, NST has got only details about the fetal, uh, the, about the fetus. Uh, and the other question was that out of all these four variables, which is most important? Okay, that is beat to beat variability. So now if you have low B to B variability, it means that there is fetal hypoxia. All right. The other question was that when you encounter a spontaneous deceleration in an NST, what does that indicate? Uh, I could not answer that. And uh, the answer was it means that there could be a fetal malformation or oligohydramnios. All right. And the other question was that uh, suppose you get all the parameters good. Okay. But there is no acceleration in your NST. Is that normal? The answer is yes if all the all other parameters are good and you're you're not getting any acceleration yes you can wait for some time and there's something called as extended nst just for the sake of completing the topic that is even after 20 minutes you're not getting any acceleration you extend you extend the time okay uh, that for about 40 to 60 minutes that is called as extended nst and uh, even after suppose even then you're not you're not getting any acceleration wait for 24 hours and do the NST. Even after 24 hours, you're getting a non-reactive NST. What do, what do you do next? Okay, you do something called as contraction stress test. You don't have to know, you don't have to know more about it, just know the name CST, contraction stress test. Alright, so that's uh, in brief about NST. Thank you.